everybody and welcome back tonight i'd like to talk about the dog-like creatures the canine ones the werewolves that are reported in the uk and around our coastal towns and villages and along the estuaries there and we do get quite a number of those reports um a very early report comes in in the 1940s and it comes in from kent and kent is on the south east coast of england and there's a story that's been passed down from generation to generation by a family from kent the shirley family and according to pat shirley while picnicking in the area her grandmother had seen a huge wolf uh, an animal that looked like something straight out of an American werewolf in London. In this incident, the beast had what was described as flaming red hair all over it, and it possessed a pair of huge and powerful jaws. It was only seen for a moment or two before vanishing into the trees. Not too far away is a place called Basildon, and in October of 1995, came, a report came in, and it was titled the Basildon Beast and it's from a young lass and she says when I was 14 or 15 I spent a lot of time outdoors messing around with a large group of friends and we'd meet up after school and hang around street corners causing mayhem the usual teenage antics because we were such a large group sometimes as many as 30 people we were often moved on from our little spots by the police and we had to find new homes and places to hang out at night Kind of like wandering bad bands of nomads. And I'm pretty sure it was October 1995 when all this happened. And we'd recently begun hanging out at an old church on a big hill near my house. And we all knew the surrounding countryside like the back of our hands as we'd grown up roving around in the trees. Never thought of anything of the fact that we were hanging around in a graveyard at night. Anyway, this particular evening... A group of seven girls had broken off from the group and had walked down the sloping road away from the church. We were a ten minute walk away from the others and well out of earshot. We sat down in a circle at the base of a small rise in a field and the sun had set behind the rise so it had a pretty glow to it. We were chatting away when we heard something being killed in the bushes, like a rabbit screaming. One of my friends jokingly said, oh it'll be a werewolf. And I just laughed and said, it must be a fox killing its dinner. About two minutes later, I looked up the rise and I saw the biggest black dog, wolf thing I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure I, I uttered the F word and everyone turned around to look. Now, I know a lot about dogs. I'm animal mad. I used to be a vet nurse. This was taller than an Irish wolfhound, but bulky like an Alsatian, with huge glowing eyes. And it started to growl at us. And we just stood and stared. I can still hear the sound it made in its throat, even to this day. And I told everyone to get up and really slowly and walk away. Do not run, as it may chase. We all took about five steps and then some idiot shouted, run. And we all descended into a mass hysteria and bolted back up the hill. Of course, no one else in the group believed us when we got back. My best friend still hasn't forgiven me for leaving her behind. She hated dogs anyway and was traumatised for ages afterwards. When we all get together and we still talk about it, nine years later, I've seen many paranormal things, but for some reason, this one incident still incites fear in me. Also, about four years ago now, I'd almost forgotten about the dog sighting and I took my terry for a walk up there. I don't often go there as I now live about three miles away. And I kind of stumbled into this field, not thinking. I paused on the rise and I suddenly remembered where I was and the dog started to growl. We shot out of there pretty fast, I can tell you. Now, before you say, one of the 15, they clearly made it up. I was 15 and many of the witnesses were 15. And 15 year olds tend to be in places where there aren't many adults about because they're smoking or, you know, they're courting or for many numerous reasons. And they are out when you live in a town like me where the countryside's right at the edge of the town. That's, you tend to get a lot of kids out there in places like that at night. Um, we, When I was younger, when I was 15, there weren't really many places like that and nobody really hung out in Beulah at night. Um, 
but I don't live in that area now. I live in a much different area. And the kids say I do. That's tend to where they head to the fields and the streams down there. Um, and they normally come in as it's going dust. Well, some of them do. Uh, but I digress. Um, so the Langrick Fell Wolf, 1926. The accounts I'm going to bring you tonight are from all over um, the country. And uh, the first ones that are coming out are the coastal ones because we had a look at Bigfoot on the coast, didn't we? So Langridge Fell Wolf, 1926. In an area known as Dog Dyke in Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire sorry, close to Langridge Fell, a local archaeologist digging in the peat discovered a human skeleton but with a wolf's head. The man took his discovery home but during the night, he found his house besieged by a werewolf. The archaeologist spent the night barricaded in the kitchen as the beast... Oh, this is not going well. Let's go back, Deborah. I must apologise. The archaeologist spent the night barricaded in the kitchen as the beast tried to gain entrance to his house. As the sun came up and the werewolf left... The man took the skeleton and reburied the bones where they were found. Now, I couldn't find any more on that story. I did have a rummage, but I was never able to bring up anything about that. So if you're um, from the area and you remember that happening or somebody in your family knows that story, please get in touch. I'd love to know more. Now, one werewolf that many people know about is Old Stinker. Um, and it's a legend on the northeast coast uh, around Hull. Now, legends of old Stinker's rancid breath and horrid appearance have persisted for hundreds of years, from around the 10th century until about the 18th century. Anyone who has encountered the foul beast would describe him as a wolf-like monster that walks on hind legs like a human. Now, according to these legends, old Stinker was, or is, formidably tall with a long, powerful tail that can sweep its prey off their feet. Its luminous blood-red eyes were compared to the crimson and darting fire, and the most recently have included a profoundly creepy additional detail. Old Stinker's face looked uncannily human-like. But the calling card of this ravenous creature was its horrible breath, as I said. Even the oldest accounts made note of how terrible its breath stank. Around the 1800s, the werewolf or canine creature reports were seen as paranormal, mostly the talk of farmhands and people who worked the land, so they were ignored and they were just looked at as folk tales. But the reports still come in. In the 1960s, a truck driver reported that while travelling down a quiet road in Yorkshire, he noticed what looked like a pair of red lights by the side of the road. According to the driver's story, when he slowed the truck down to get a better look at the lights, a huge wolf-like creature attacked his truck. Now, the creature reportedly tried to break the windshield of the truck before disappearing back into the dark. And as it did, the driver realised that what he had mistaken for a pair of red lights were in fact the creature's glowing red eyes. When residents of Yorkshire began hearing about the driver's harrowing encounter, they began to realise that the giant red-eyed wolf-like attacker bore a strange, frightening resemblance to the old stinker of legend. One headline announced, The Werewolf of Hull. Witnesses claim they spotted an eight-foot-tall fanged beast with human-like features in May of 2016. A number of werewolf sightings have been reported in the woods outside of Hull, sparking locals to organise a hunt for the beast. Over the past few months, witnesses have come forward to speak of spotting a huge hairy creature around the Barmston Drain, a man-made channel near the town of Beverley in Yorkshire. Some locals believe the sightings are evidence of a mythical Yorkshire beast called Old Stinker. And although the area are not adjacent, they're close enough that the beast could be stalking both areas. Or are there a multitude of these creatures, each being reported as the same one? A woman who cited the potential werewolf in December of 2017, 2015, I apologise, told the newspaper, This creature was huge. It was stood upright one moment. The next it was down on all fours, running like a dog. I was terrified. It vaulted 30 feet over to the other side of the drain and vanished up the embankment and over a wall into some allotments. 
She said that it ran both on two legs and down on all fours, as if with the qualities of both human and wolf. This is an actual photograph that was sent in uh, by a motorist who claims to have captured the creature uh, as it was walking down the road in his lights um, in Hull. Another couple said they saw something tall and hairy eating a dog next to the channel, which runs through the countryside. Lincolnshire, Yorkshire and Leicestershire have lots and lots of drainage ditches because you get a lot of rain in the UK and the farm hands and people down there know about them and any self-respecting creature would probably use them to move around, I would imagine. Uh, and as I say, the couple said that they saw something tall and hairy eating a dog next to one of these channels. They added that it jumped over an eight feet high fence with the animal in its mouth. Now the woman who was walking her dog spotted something that she described as half dog, half human. She told one of the British newspapers, The Express, her dog, she said, refused to go any further along the path they were walking down. Now, witnesses and folklore experts have been quick to link the sightings to the well-known legend of Old Stinker, as I said. Now, although Old Stinker the Beast is supposedly to stalk just the walled Newton Triangle, it is an area there that's known for mysterious activity. You get all kinds of reports down there, UFO sightings, um, Bigfoot type creatures, lights in the sky, um, numerous spirits and hauntings. One that Paul's covered, Paul Sinclair, and knows far better than me, I should have actually asked him for um, any information he had, is the Flixton werewolf. It's a bit further north on the same coast, but a little bit further north, and that came in in 1940 as well. And it says there's no way of knowing just how far back the Flixton werewolf tales go. But in the year 940, the situation was such that a hostel was built in Flixton specifically for the protection of travellers from the said werewolf. Now, the werewolf had reportedly attacked sheep and local people as well as travellers. And when you think about it, 1940 is an incredibly long time ago. Now, the winters at the time were particularly cruel in northern Britain and food was scarce. Freshly buried corpses were dug up and devoured and anyone out after dark was risking being attacked, it was said. Now, the Flixton werewolf became a quite notorious at the, the time. For over 900 years, this area has been known for reports of strange creatures known locally as the Flixton werewolf or the Flixton beast. One of the possible theories, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, is it could be the enormous amount of ancient burial sites that are on that coastline that could play into why people are um, seeing so many and reporting so many werewolf reports over a 900 year period. Now, some people will say, say, oh, there was no dogman reports until the, you know, the late 2000s when people started listening to podcasts. In Wales, there are accounts that go back all the way to the first century. The same in Ireland, um, a massive amount of werewolf or dog-like creatures written in their history, the same in Scotland and the same in England. So we've always had them, along with like the werewolf. Sometimes um, there are regional names for them and names that we no longer know so that we can't research back any further to try and find out. But if that's somewhere where your um, knowledge base lies, please get in touch because if you can think of a source or an archive or anything like that, that we could have a rummage in and see if we can pull any of the older reports out. I would imagine some of them have been mislabeled as shook uh, or devil dogs and devil hounds and things like that. But it would be interesting to know. I know there's many areas of the UK that have reports of shucks and shugs and devil hounds and, you know, hell hounds and the whole nine yards. The Billingham Black Dog. They didn't know whether it was a wolf or a shuck, but it was reported in 2000. Now, this report I've had for a really long time and I've never been able to contact the original witness who made the report, so I have to let you know that. It was in the Indigo uh, Group blog 
Um, so if you're out there and uh, you're reading this report or listening to it, I would love for you to get in touch. I've tried through that site um, so many times to send you a message and I've never got a reply. I do have other reports not too far away and I'd love to put you in touch with some of the people who have seen a similar creatures as one you see. I was actually staying down there last month um, and the, play, the farm that we stayed, the farmer said that he saw a very strange dog-like creature that he also described as looking like an Irish weir, an Irish wolfhound, but much bigger, on his land about four years ago. Um, so it could be a very similar creature to what these uh, gentlemen have seen. For nearly a year now, myself and my friend keep seeing a really big black dog. We see it mostly in the area that we live. And we know for certain that it's not just a stray dog, or an animal, or something domestic. Whatever this thing is, it's a huge wolf-like thing. And to be really honest, until we read the information on the site, we thought we might have been imagining it. The creature we see looks a little more like a wolf than a dog. It has reddish eyes, and it's always in the same places. And we live in Billingham, and it's a town near to Middlesbrough, in the northeast of England, very close by is an old village nearly a mile away called Wolverston. And I've since wondered if this was mere coincidence or has the area always been known for the wolf-like animals. It might interest you to know that the place where I stayed and the farmer knew uh, had seen um, an animal on his land was called Wolverle uh, in Wolverhampton. So, you know, honestly, I've noticed that UK dog or dogman or wolfman information we find on the internet always mention deaths or attacks. But up to now, touch wood, no one near to us has died or been hurt in any way. It doesn't seem to hurt or attack people. And we would really be grateful if you could send us some more information about this. And if you want any information on what we've seen, I'll gladly send it to you. First, of, let me tell you what happened. You're either going to think we were escaped mental patients or kids with too much time on our hands. And we're not telling the truth because that's been the reaction with everyone else who we've told or asked for help. I assure you, we are telling you the truth. I'm 17 and my friend today is 19. We were walking from a camping party back home about 3am in the morning. We were walking the lanes on the way to our houses when I noticed Steve was watching something as we walked. And when I looked in the same direction, there was a large dark shadow about the size of a large dog. I shone the torchlight at it and it vanished completely. I removed the light and there it was again. I said it must have just been a shadow, but as we walked, it remained beside us. Then we saw a pair of red eyes come from it, as if the eyes on this thing had opened and I shone the torch again and again and it vanished. But this time when I removed the torch and it reappeared, it was much closer to us than it had been before and it was still moving towards us very quickly. We were really scared and we ran off from it. Since that night, we've both seen it a number of times, but we've never actually heard it bark or howl. It seems to appear in the same places each time and on all occasions, it usually starts coming towards us. The weird thing is, we never hardly see it in the winter. In fact, I haven't seen it since last September. We've only seen the eyes glow like that twice. Once was in the middle of the golf course while we were taking a shortcut and we were quite deep into the rough and it was totally pitch black in there so I doubt that it was retina reflection. And the second time I saw it was out by a main road and it was pretty late and there were no cars around but it is possible it could have been reflected from the street lamp. Thanks for your help, Graham. The Cresswell Dog Man, 1989. Now, two men made a report about something that happened when they were youngsters, cruising around the towns and villages of North East England. I hope you're noticing the pattern. On a late summer's night in 1989, for lack of anything better to do, they were driving the lanes when they found an unexpected cure for their boredom in the form of an upright, unidentifiable creature that ran in front of the car. Now, the driver, who wishes to remain anonymous, wrote about the event 
and he contacted Linda Godfrey. After having found a dogman sketch based on other eyewitness reports in her blog that matched with the creature that they saw, he said he had searched for years afterwards trying to figure out what he and his friend had seen that night, but Linda's sketch was the closest. The night of their encounter was not long after I bought a car, he said. My friend Sean and I were out driving around the local towns and villages, playing some tunes on cassettes and generally just cruising about. It must have been very late because it was dark by the time we passed through the small coastal village of Cresswell, um, which is in Northumberland. So I'm assuming it was around about 11 o'clock, 2300 hours, and this is the actual image in question. I remember we were heading southwest from Cresswell to Ellington on Cresswell Road, having just passed the entrance to the caravan site on our left. I had not yet had a, an opportunity to test the extra fog lights on the front of the vehicle, and I wanted to see how bright they were in the dark. Sean was looking to the glove compartment for a different cassette, and I told him I was going to switch the fog lights on. We were coming up to the slight right-hand bend, and there was a six-foot wall with dense foliage on our left and a normal hedgerow bordering the field to our right. And that's when I saw something run out in the middle of the road. It wasn't going very fast, probably 30 miles an hour max, and it had ample time to slow down so as not to hit it, even to stop. But I'm sh not sure I did. I think I just crawled the car towards it as I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It ran out onto the road from my right and it had stopped in the middle of the road looking directly at the car. It was covered in thick mouthy grey brown fur about two or three inches long and stood on its rear legs which were jointed with the knee at the rear like a horse or a dog's. Its upper arms were down by its side and it held its forearms out in front of it with its hands and long fingers hung down from the wrist. They may have been long hands or long fingers, but I remember the hands on this creature. And from the wrist to the fingers was very long. It had one foot in front of the other, as if in mid-step, as it seemed I'd caught it by surprise. And while its body was still facing in the direction it was travelling, the head was facing the car. I remember the eyes, which reflected the light back at me, as perfectly round, and they were a greeny-yellow colour much like that of a cat's eyes when caught in the light. It stood about five or six feet tall, but it was hunched over and wasn't standing to its full height. Even then I'd say it wouldn't have been over six feet tall stood erect. It had what seemed to be a very muscular body, not big or bulky, more wiry with powerful limbs, thick chest and a small waist. It also had a short tail, maybe four or five inches long. Definitely not as long as most dogs. Personally, I describe it as more like a goat's tail. After seeing this, I mainly searched for sightings of satyrs in the region as this was the closest thing I could relate it to at the time. Its head and face were like that of a dog or a goat, as in not flat like a human face, but with a muzzle and quite large ears. I do remember seeing I don't remember seeing any teeth and it did not have horns or anything like that. Now the whole encounter could not have lasted more than a few seconds and I assume it regained its composure after being caught off guard and took off over the six foot wall and through the foliage atop that in a single bound. Although I often drive by the same area, I've never seen it again. As for how I felt, I was in shock at first, like when someone gives you a fright. I shouted, John, John, to make sure he was looking as he was fishing around in the glove box for a tape. I just couldn't take it in. After it had gone, we were still going slow. We were looking back to where it had disappeared and I felt terrified. I've always considered myself a fairly macho type and not easily scared, but there was no chance of me getting out of that car to follow it. In fact, we drove on a ways. There was a guy walking his dog further up the road, maybe half a mile, and for a moment I considered telling him not to go down that way. We slowed down, but we honestly didn't know what the hell to say, so we decided it was far enough away from it, so we just kept going. 
we were still really shook up at this point. And I have to mention that neither of us, myself self nor Sean, was under the influence of alcohol or drugs. It's very hard to talk about it. As quite frankly, most people don't believe it. I wasn't sure if you would, or even do, to be honest. And I imagine you must get folks who try and pull your leg. But hand on heart, all I have said is true, and to, to the best of my knowledge. I want you to know that. I can't tell you how excited I was when I found out someone else had seen it and I couldn't actually put a name to this creature. The next account is the Polton Mill Mill Stag and Deborah. The Polton Mill Werewolf. I'm really tongue tried tonight. I don't know what's going on. I must apologise for my lack of professionalism. Um, but it's just me and you, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Now, the following story comes from Charmaine Fraser, and it's an account by three guys from a painter and decorating firm. And they were driving up to a storage blocks in Polton Mill to resupply to carry out work when they said they saw a seven or eight foot upright wolf on the roof of the lockup that they were supposed to go into. It jumped down in front of them. The boss who was driving rapidly reversed up to them and they jumped in and drove off. They never returned to the warehouses and they left the job site, which meant the cost of all those supplies fell down on them to pay and they decided to take it on the chin rather than going back. Losing massive of replacement materials and the farming who had driven in there spent at least three months in hospital as he had a nervous breakdown. The other two guys found out that the police were worried about the night watchman of the place because he'd become a missing person. The police had advertised around about him as to his whereabouts, but nobody had ever heard from him again. The creature of Loch Marais. A witness in his 70s made a report that happened to her many decades ago in the 50s. She was in the area of Loch Marais in Scotland. And the witness reported that she'd seen what she described as a hairy man with a wolf's head roaming near Loch Marais. And she went on and further described the creature walking on two feet, but running on all fours. The witness, now in her 70s, described seeing the creature at a distance of about 70 feet. And she said, it stared at me in a horrible way before bounding away. Another report from Scotland is the Hainish Wolf. On the Isle of Tyree, Argyll and Butte, is a small village known as Hainish. There's a long-standing legend of a werewolf-like creature that is known for its dislike of canines. It is blamed for tearing apart stray local hounds by the people in the area. The human-wolf hybrid has been seen during both the day and the night. Or was described as an upright hairy wolfman by anyone unfortunate enough to see him. Could you imagine coming face to face with something like that at night? It would just be absolutely terrifying. Now, this is a very strange account that was on the radio, uh, the Wirral Werewolves. In 2002, on the BBC Radio Merseyside show, which is not too far away from me, a former security guard who worked at a certain hospital in the Wirral rang in and told a chilling story that was later backed up by a porter, a policeman and several nurses. The guard, Craig, said that a heavily pregnant girl, aged about 25, was brought into the Wirral Hospital after going into labour. She seemed delirious and wanted to have her baby in a teepee for some reason. But an older man, possibly the woman's partner, brought her to the hospital, then quickly left. As the woman went into the throes of labour, the midwife and the nurses attending to her saw the patient undergo a startling and very frightening transformation. The grimacing face of the young woman turned slowly into the face of some animal. The tip of her nose darkened, the skin became hairy and turned a strange greyish pink colour and long pointed teeth protruded from her mouth. The midwife and nurses backed away from the bed in terror as the woman began to make snarling noises and the security guard, Craig, was called. When Craig reached the ward, he saw the nurses run past him into the corridor. And then he saw the figure in hospital clothes, which looked humanoid, 
only the face was that of an animal with a snout. The entity ran to the plate glass second floor window and smashed it with its fists before jumping through the frame into the garden. Craig reached the smash window within seconds and caught a fleeting glimpse of the woman running off into the moonlight. The Doom Valley Wolfman. A woman walking home after dark reported seeing a dark, hair-covered creature, which she described as a grey man with a wolf's head. It was apparently stalking a large rabbit. The creature vanished, and when disturbed by a stag that ran out from the nearby wooded area. The Old Barn Wolfman is another tale. In the early hours of winter, morning on a stretch of road outside of the Scottish town of Old Barn, in this case, the witness making the report was a mailman on his way to work, and he described seeing the creature racing along the road at very high speed in the opposite direction to that with which he was travelling. The beast totally ignored the shock driver, who continued on his journey in a highly agitated state, not quite believing what it was that he'd just seen. But he was sure on the facts it was around 3am in the morning, and for a few brief seconds he had encountered a tall, man-like figure with wolf-like features hurtling along the road at breakneck speed. Up to now, I have only mentioned reports close to the coast and estuaries, but if you follow those estuaries in and use the rivers and streams that fan out from them, we open up a whole new source of canine reports. Rivacre, Ellesmere Port, a blacker than the night wolf. And this isn't too far away from the werewolf, werewolf report, not too far away from me, actually. Billy Thompson, um, I actually spoke with Billy, and reported an encounter that happened many years ago now. I was about nine or ten, and I was out with my grandparents, Brian and Margaret. We were going for a walk down Rivacre Valley in the northwest of England in a place called Elmsmere Port. I walked down Rivacre Alley often. I can't remember much of that day and how we got there or what generally happened. It was so long ago. We were walking along and my nan said she spotted what looked like a big puma looking through the bushes at us. She walked closer to get a better look when my granddad started shouting, Stop, Margaret! By now, it had moved to the right, but was trying to come back around her. So my granddad shouted, It's flanking you! While all of this was going on, I'm trying to look everywhere to see what it was. My granddad was holding my hand quite tight, I do remember that. And my nan was staring off to the right like she was in a daydream all the time. I'm still trying to see what it is that she can see, but I can't see it. I see a big hole about four feet off the ground on the floor in the bushes, but I didn't look right. Something was in that hole. I stared until my eyes adjusted. And I could see what I was looking at were a set of eyes. I could see two big black eyes. The eyes were very wide apart and they didn't look right. Whatever it was, it was blinking. I could see it clear once I knew that it was eyes. All in around the eyes were pitch black. And I could see that whatever this thing was, it was darker than everything else around it. I started to try and see more. And then I looked up at my granddad and said, is it black what you're looking for? And he said, yeah, can you see it? And I pointed at the hole where I could see the eyes, but he couldn't see them and make them out. After we got back and we'd be discussing what happened, my granddad said that he'd seen it walk off from us. But as it turned to walk off, it doubled back on itself. So its front legs were closer to its rear leg. It had turned that tight. My nan said she and her work colleague saw something like it once more when she was doing a night shift at work. She said it kind of looked like the other one we'd seen, but on this occasion she noticed this thing had triangular ears on top of its head. The second time my nan saw this thing, it was behind a six-foot metal fence that went all around the property. My nan told me that she was waiting for the shift change on the front of her work property and she was standing within the car park and the area was all fenced in because it was a home for disabled children. My nurse Nan said she noticed it as she could see something moving behind the fence in the dark. She was with other colleagues chatting away, so she just walked up closer to what she, you know, to get a better look. My Nan said this thing looked like a wolf, a big black wolf. My Nan was stubborn and wouldn't let anything 
get the better of her normally. But she said she felt itchy and uneasy on this occasion, so she walked back to the others she'd been standing with. I don't know if she told them or not, but she did add as she was walking closer. She turned left, then right, and this thing followed her movement. I don't know what she meant by that. I've asked myself over and over what this thing I saw was, but I don't know what it was. After doing research, I'm leaning to either a big cat or a dogman-type creature. My nan was convinced it was a blacker-than-the-night wolf. Another wolf was reported in Devon in 1996. I live in a small town in Devon in the UK, just south of Dartmoor, and there have been many sightings of what appear to be werewolves in the fields near here and up on the moors themselves. The most known sighting was in 1996, and it was a lady known as Emily Watton. She was walking her two dogs, a collie and a Labrador, Springer Spaniel Cross, on the moors in early October, when the dogs started going crazy. They both, at the same instant, turned around and started trying to run in the opposite direction Emily was headed. Emily kept hold of the leads while trying to turn her dogs around, and she saw a huge creature, about seven or eight feet tall, running towards her. It was wolf-like, but the forelegs were much longer and the chest much deeper. It was covered in fine black, grey and brown fur and had brilliantly yellow eyes. The snout was longer than either of her dogs and she could see fangs when the creature opened its mouth. She started to run, but the creature was in her estimation at least four times as fast as she was. When the creature got about 20 feet from her, the dog suddenly turned and started barking at it, trying to protect her. Emily kept running, but as she looked over her shoulder, she saw the creature stand up on its hind legs, grab the two dogs, then throw the collie onto a rock and rip out her spaniel's throat. When she got back to town and told her husband what had happened, she was taken to hospital. The Hemsley Wolfman. My experience goes back some years ago now, in North Yorkshire, to what only can only be described as seeing a werewolf. I'm a logical person. Before this, to me, they were just something from horror films, and science fiction, and they just don't exist. But after hearing what I've heard, and seeing what I saw, I now believe differently. I've googled ever since to see if anyone has seen anything in that area, but I've never found anything. It's the first time I've discussed the incident for fear of ridicule. Put it this way, I won't camp out on the moors again. I went for a walk outside my motorhome. I can only describe what were blood-curdling howls, exactly as you would imagine from a movie. It just came out of nowhere. I heard them to the side of me, so I decided to walk back to my van as I couldn't work out what was making those howls. As I approached the van, the howls were in front of me. So yeah, I started to do a faster walk, and then I saw the shape of something shaggy on two legs. It was behind my motorhome, and it was standing upright. It was about six feet tall, and had a shaggy coat with glowing red eyes, and it stood on two legs like a human. It was not a dog, as it was far too big. I've had dogs all my life, but I've never heard a howl as deep or as loud as the one this creature made. There was no one around for miles, and it was a pretty remote place up there. I didn't see any animals. No farm animals or dog walkers, no wildlife come to think of it at all. I didn't see it close up. Instead, I legged it as fast as I could. I saw the shape of it from a distance and I heard it following me and it was off to the side of me so I moved pretty quickly. It was wandering outside my van for a good 20 minutes. At one point it sounded like it was underneath the van. To be honest I sat there quiet and I was too scared to look out of the window and I was just hoping someone was playing a prank on me. In the morning I looked around outside expecting to find something but there was nothing to see. No evidence of any kind. I went to the spot where something had been stood and that's where I got the estimate it was around six feet tall by putting myself in the same spot. I'd lit a fire earlier outside and the only thing I can think of was on seeing the fire in the middle of nowhere. It was attracted, was enough to attract it in. It was foggy and out of camping season with only me out there in the camper van. I found no footprints around the van in the morning 
nothing to show what had happened the night before. A female werewolf, a dogman, or a snouted creature. I received a report last spring 2018 from a number of witnesses to the same figure during a journey back to Manchester from North Yorkshire. Luckily, one of the ladies on the journey knows me and my interest in the unknown creatures or figures that we get here in the UK, so she felt okay speaking with me about it. Now, the ladies were travelling two vehicles in a convoy. They must have taken a wrong turn on an unfamiliar road and sadly one of the cars needed petrol. So they proceeded to search for a garage that could help them. After finding the garage, they set off again, only for the lead car to suffer a blowout. It seems fate was playing a hand, for it was in that moment on a dark country road, one of the ladies in the back of the car said, Can you see him? And as she pointed at the dark running human figure on the hillside, a second lady along on the outing replied that she could, and that it was a running man. Kay stated, when we first left the venue, we needed petrol and it was late, really late at night. So we were sent miles out of the way down dark country roads and none of us knew. Eventually we hit a village with a petrol station. It was a really bad journey and a day all round and the lead car had a blowout. We had to continue and leave them behind. So to be honest, my mind was elsewhere. Earlier, as we were parked outside the garage, we saw a large wolf-like dog. It was really big and the girls pointed it out and then they watched it as it walked off. But I didn't pay any attention to be honest. At that point, I just wanted us all to be home safe. It had been a long, hard day and although the dog looked much bigger than your average dog, not a fox at all, but more like a wolf than the dog, I just ignored it. It was just slinking along and it moved behind some houses and in all the commotion, I just forgot about it. It was a strange night all round. As we set off, I was on the phone to the other car. When one of the ladies, Nicola, said, Can you see him? And pointed up at the hillside. And to be honest, I could. I could just make out a large black shape. But we passed far too fast to get a good look, so I couldn't be 100% sure. At which point, Jodie, another of the girls, stated she could also see it. Honestly, I was so shook up from the journey. It just put it out of my mind. But the girls talked about it all the way home. We all saw a really tall, over six feet, very broad, dark figure running in the middle of the night on a lonely road somewhere along the M6. Nicholas stated, on Saturday, just gone, 6th of the first 18, we'd been to Yorkshire and on the way back we were coming over the moors. I swear I saw a figure running along the hillside and along the motorway. He was just running at some speed, but he looked odd, really tall, taller than six feet and broad. It was running up on the hill, then along with the line of the motorway. But the car moved on and he was out of sight by then. It was the speed that first caught my eye. It moved so fast and it was really big. Jodie stated, I was coming back from the trip across the moor in the car. It had been a bad journey, so we were parked up at first while we decided what to do. When we set off, it was really dark. And I saw this weird looking wolf thing. It looked big and bulky like a wolf. And then as we made it onto the motorway, we saw a figure up on the bank. Whatever it was, it looked like a massive man, but with a small head. It ran up the bank and then carried on running. There was something off about it that made you think it wasn't just a man out late running in the middle of nowhere. While speaking with ladies one to one, the first lady to see it, had a very good eye view of the creature and she described a snouted mouth and clear and visible breasts. I checked back with some of the witnesses separately and asked why they'd all said him. The reply was the same from each of them. They presumed it was a male due to the sheer size of the figure and the muscular build. As the car was moving, each lady saw the figure from a differing view as they drove in the opposite direction that the figure was moving. The lady in the lead car who had the first view said she could clearly tell it was a woman. It was all one colour with a huge stature, but the breasts were sagging and impossible to discount, she said. Now, not too far away, between there and Risley, Ellesmere Port, I should say, is an area called Risley. 
And in the early hours of the morning, on the 11th of 6, 2018, so about five months after the early report, the van driver travelling on the road between Warrington and Manchester, going about his normal nightly route, saw something crossing the road in front of him that he cannot explain. Now, the creature he described as dog-like, but bigger than a horse and moving fast, said the shop driver. When he was describing the speed, he said, it dusted out of sight in seconds. Well, if you're from Manchester, that means it went really, really fast. Now, the sighting has left the man confused as to what he saw and how it could have moved away from him so fast. The road itself runs between two parks, uh, nature parks, and it's surrounded by other strange accounts of skulking road crossing creatures and growls that I can attest to. Now, the driver himself has no prior interest of cryptids or strange creatures or anything out of the norm, really. And to be honest, he was very sceptical of a family member who had in the past spoke about a sighting of something unexplained that they'd had. He now feels less sceptical, no doubt. I want to report something that happened last night when I was on my route. I was out on the road about 3am this morning, 11th of the 6th, 18. I had my lights on, of course, and the road was empty of traffic. But as I passed the Birchwood Forest Park on the A547, something crossed the road in front of me. It was moving on all fours, and it was massive, at least as big as a horse, but this thing ran like a dog. Thank God it kept moving and stayed on all fours, because upright it would have been at least nine feet tall, he explained. It was dark, so I can't give you a despite dis Deborah. I can't give you a precise colour, but it was huge. Honestly, it spooked it out of me. I did stop and look where it was, and I couldn't see it anywhere. And it had moved off that fast. Now the A five seven four Birchwood Forest Park was where it was coming from, and it was big as a horse, but it looked and moved more like a dog of some kind. I'm still freaked out by all this, and I felt a bit off since last night and a bit light headed. I keep thinking about it and the fact that when I stopped to look where it was, it had gone. It should have been in sight, but it had dusted as he put it. It had gone. Birchwood and Risley in new towns and built to accommodate the overspill between Manchester and Liverpool in the 1960s and towards the 90s in the northwest of England. And the new towns are surrounded like by Forest Park and the River Mersey and the account's very similar to one just down the road of a road crossing skulking creature. And he couldn't um, decide what it was because he saw it um, in the headlights of his car and he said it was black, all in colour, and it skulked across the road. Um, and the creature he described as belly crawling across the road and all dark in colour. And that happened only three years ago in 2015. Now, a dog's dog strup on two legs. This is in a very similar area. I was told this from two of my friends, not me personally, the gentleman making report, who were fishing on a place behind the Raven pub. We call it the Moss. There's a pond there which used to be a good fishing spot. This was around 23, 25 years ago now. They'd fished most of the day and they were just packing up the gear to go home. And having packed it, they loaded the gear on the backs and they started to walk down a track. As they were walking through the thick grass and shrubs, they heard a noise which startled them both. And they turned around and saw a huge dog-like thing. Now bearing in mind these two were handy lads, on what I would call rum, and they weren't phased by much, but this shook them up. The dog was stood on two legs, they both said, and it had bloodshot red eyes and it started to walk towards them. At this, they both turned and ran, not looking back till they reached the road. And as they looked back, the thing was gone. They said it was huge, and never none of us have ever fished there again. This was around half nine at night, and that's all they said, and that's all they've ever said. Now, a large, dark creature crossing the path. Dogman, Brigfoot, K9, Britain Ferry Woods, 1980s. Before I start, I would like to say I am really not sure what to call this thing. Creature, figure that I experienced that day. I can only tell you what it looked and sounded like and what happened. I've looked for answers for many years now. 
And although there is so much information out there on cryptids and Bigfoot and Jogman alike, there is no definitive guide. No chart you can plot it on for answer or a quiz you can take to see where your score leads. You see a huge dark figure that moves not only on all fours but also on two with ease. You hear it move through the brush and fell trees easily as if the path was clear. And I can say it was massive. It sounded like a cow or a moose breaking through that scrub. It moved down the embankment, across the road and off into the shrub to my side with ease. It moved fluidly with purpose and I had no idea what it was. I'm in my 50s now, but back then when I was a lad, it was my 16th birthday and I was lucky enough to have been given an air rifle as a gift. And there are two reservoirs where I lived then, one older than the other. I was coming from the new reservoir area, using the forestry tracks, going to the old reservoir. It was around dusk. There was a high steep bank to my left hand side and a low bank to my right. Now the banks are heavily forested with lots of old logs and stumps and underbrush and brambles and prickles. The banks would have been a nightmare to struggle through. And there was a clear cut level gravel path anyway, making for easier travel. I couldn't quite believe it when I heard something crashing through the undergrowth, keeping up with me at ease. It was huge. Well, it sounded huge, cow-sized at least, and it was smashing things out of the way and moving through that jumble of logs and rotten wood without any problem at all. I felt shadowed, and I could tell it was going from two legs to four and back again to two. Whatever worked best to keep it moving forward. I was getting pretty scared at this point. I could not think what could be doing that in there. And to be honest, without thinking, I put a pellet in the air rifle. Now, as most lads will tell you, there's a double bullet technique that is sometimes done to make a much louder crack when fired. And that's what I did. I loaded one pellet as normal. Then I put another pellet down the barrel and I pointed it in the direction of that noise. And I fired without even thinking about it. Crack. All goes quiet. Nothing. Not a sound. And then I hear it moving again, about 30 feet in front of me now. I keep going as I can't head back, and whatever was shadowing me would come really close, making a lot of noise, and then pull back. Move close and pull back, over and over, and I was really scared. As it got parallel to the old reservoir, it was ahead of me in the brush, and then I saw it as it emerged from the undergrowth onto the road and crossed briefly. It was really dark and bulky, and I couldn't see many details or make out its face. It then dropped onto all fours and was gone in seconds into the brush and scrub. Even seeing it then, with my own eyes as it approached and went past me on the road, I was still disbelieving what was happening. I kept telling myself it was not happening. Whatever crossed the road was now out eight or nine feet tall. It was very tall. Very bulky, but it moved with ease. It had no problem walking on two legs, and I don't remember what I did after that. Every time I think about that night, I tell myself it never happened. It was impossible. But then, if I'd known the word, I would have said Bigfoot. But then you hear of so many other cryptids. It could be dogman-like. You just don't know. I cannot be 100%. So for now, I'm happy just saying... I saw something huge and dark and upright on two legs that move with ease down on all fours and I cannot explain that. Now the River Seven is home to more than just one creature. A man sees a strange creature running low to the ground. My name is Simon Austin and I'm from Colford near Gloucestershire and I've lived here all my life. I never knew where to report my encounter to until a friend of mine told me about Mark Fanel, a friend of his who follows sightings and unexplainable creatures like Bigfoot. And Mark Fanel is a member of the British Bigfoot Research Team. Now, I work in Staunton, and one morning I woke up at 5am and I got myself ready for work. As I was driving down Skulls Road, heading for the A4136 highway, keeping in mind there was very little to no traffic, I approached a left turn junction near Stowfield Quarry. At that point, my car was hit by a small log or branch. In shock, I looked to my right from where the sound emitted and from what I saw was frightening to say the least. 
I witnessed a creature sprinting towards me on all fours. At least that's what I thought until it came closer. It was running on two legs, but it was low to the floor. It resembled a dog. It had a long snout and it was much taller than a dog and very thin. It accelerated off as fast as it could. Oh, I accelerated off, sorry, as fast as I could. The creature was black in colour and had frosted eyes. I've never seen anything like this before and I hope I don't see it again. I hope this helps anyway. The Black Mountain Werewolf I saw something when I was younger and here's my story. I was about 19 and me and my girlfriend and my three best friends went camping in the Black Mountains in Wales. We went to the local pub and had a few and we drove back to our campsite in the middle of nowhere and we were just camping in the glade surrounded by the woods. Myself and my girlfriend had one tent and my friends had the other. And upon settling down for the night, I found out I had no six. So I made up a tale that someone was outside our tent. One of my brave pals got out of the tent and had a look around. And while he was up, I asked for a pack of his cigarettes. And my pals realised what the was a ruse. And they entered my tent and playfully duffed me up. About an hour or so later, my girlfriend woke me up saying, Someone's outside. So thinking it was my pals getting me back, I shouted out, I know it's one of you. But each one answered from the tent, nope, not us. So I grabbed my torch and I left the tent. It was pitch black and I heard something make a run for it. As I left the tent and scanned the tree line with my torch, as the beam went to the left to the right, it passed a shadow human shape. But its eyes reflected like cats, but they were red. I shone my torch at it and I saw a humanoid figure run through the woods but on all fours. I screamed and told my mates and my girlfriend, but they thought I was having them on again. They just thought I was checking the mate. I still had this image in my mind, and it was a werewolf. He then went on to say, When my torch burst at the creature, it was on two legs. But then, when my torch went back to it, it was on all fours, running away through the trees. Sindersford, Forrester Dean, 2018. This account came into me through email and the gentleman kindly allowed me to share the image of it and the video itself is out on my YouTube channel so just look for the Cinderford Forest of Dean. I read the recent accounts with interest and I was surprised when I started to see that there have been other accounts from the Forest of Dean, an area I have a strange experience in myself. It helps to know I'm not alone in what I've seen and experienced down there. And as we discussed earlier, when I sent my account over to you in email, the Dean is a very strange place. I know there have been other strange sightings on the Dean. During my recent walks in the forest, I've noticed my dog acting strangely. There have been occasional strange reactions from the dog, and sometimes the dog acts strangely in different areas of the Dean. Not always the same area spooks him. But it's out of character enough that I started keeping a note of the dog's behaviour. Now, this is something that happened a couple of weeks ago, so 20th of September 2018. I regularly walk the Yorkshire Terrier out in the forest, and he's a rescue dog, and he doesn't like other dogs, so I walk him alone and off the normal dog walking pass. He tries to fight any dog that he meets, so I have to keep him on his lead. He is totally fearless. It doesn't matter to him if it's a Rottweiler, a pit bull, or a German Shepherd. He will try and have a go despite his size. Owners of Yorkshire Terriers would no doubt agree, I think. Anyway, I'm very familiar with the large local wildlife. There's fallow deer down there, and roe deer, monk jack, and of course hundreds of wild boar now living there, which I see them regularly. On this occasion, I was walking down the forest track about two miles out of Cinderford, when unusually the dog started acting in a scared and nervous manner. He was cowering behind me, which has never happened before. I couldn't think of anything that would spook him this much, so I managed to get him to continue down the path a little way. Shortly after this, as I'm pulling the dog along, three wild boar cross the path at speed, about 30 feet in front of us. But as usual, the dog ignored them. It was something else that was spooking him. I calmed him down and we slowed, space and we slowed pace and we kept on with the walk. But several minutes later, the dog started to become agitated again. Once again, he refused to continue with the walk. He was trying to go back the way we'd come. I looked around to see what could be causing this reaction, and I saw a face looking at me about a hundred yards away in the woods. It was just looking at me and the dog. 
He didn't move or do anything. So I pulled up my phone and I took a picture on Maximum Zoom. The dog refused to carry on, so I left with him, not looking back, and we went back the way we came. I've been back down that path several times since the incident, and on three occasions the dog has showed signs of anxiety again, but I've seen nothing. No one watching from the trees that I could make out. I did find some thick, thick structures nearby, but I think they were probably man-made. Please look at the pictures and see what you think. And when you're looking at them, keep in mind that the ferns that the creature was standing in are four or five feet tall. It looks like it's standing hunched over, and I thought it was possibly canine. I'm one of those people that talk to animals. I say hello to deer and boar and even the squirrels when I see them as I walk along. When I first saw the face looking at me, I said aloud, I can see you. And I even waved at it, thinking it must be a deer or a boar. It was after looking at the face for a while that I realised it was neither. That's when I got my phone out. I think it was watching or stalking the boar I've seen minutes before. And the face, when I saw it, it was down in the ferns. I think I might have blown its cover, that's why it raised itself out of the ferns. I'd never felt threatened whilst walking that path. In fact, it's a favourite of mine due to the wildlife I encounter. Although lately, the wildlife seems to have left the area for some reason. I do tend to talk out loud on that path, and so there's no one around. Saying things like, I'm just passing through, I mean, you know how, I've not changed my routine. I still walk the path, both alone and with the dog. I do get an airy feeling of being watched sometimes down there. The path is only about a quarter of a mile away from the popular sculpture trail, which attracts thousands of visitors every year. If anything, I feel privileged to have seen it. And I've never heard of any similar sightings that it could be. The usual big cat sighting are reported, and I've seen one myself, along with the occasional sheep kill. But I couldn't explain what kind of creature this was, other than to say it was hair covered and it looked canine. My mind goes back to Sunday morning in October this year and I was just passing through the area of the encounter and I came across three or four men, each with several dogs and long lens cameras. They were crisscrossing the area, not on the pass, but in the wooded sections. They seemed to be searching for something. Maybe others have seen something. The Wartley Black Dog I was walking with a mate from Barnsley to Wartley in South Yorkshire as we neared Wartley, we came up on a small wooded area with a steep banking. As we started up the bank, a few rabbits and a hare shot past us, running across the path, going fast, and we joked something must have put the wind up them and got them moving like that. As we came to the top of the bank, we turned right along the side of a ploughed field, which was running parallel to the path we were on. About 20 feet away was the largest jet black dog I have ever seen. It was like a super large jet black Irish wolfhound. It looked like a real dog, but it was as large in size, and as it passed us at full pelt, it made no sound at all. No panting, no disturbing mud, nothing. Just silence as it disappeared through the hedge and went over the hill into the next field, still going like the clappers. I thought of the bar guest and the black shook of old, but I thought these always had large glowing red eyes. And knowing the padfoot is sometimes a death omen, I didn't linger on the subject. But my mate had also noticed the lack of any sound coming from the dog. A young girl comes face to face with a snouted creature. Now this is account came in to me from a young lady who I met through Facebook. And she runs a paranormal team in Bolton, which is an area that I live in Lancashire. And she says, I remember my dad took his kids to a huge forest when we were little and he used to let us run riot. It was a large forest and even though the sun was blazing hot, it was really cold and dark in the in thing. And she's talking about the forest of Boland. And she's playing out and she's only little and she loses her bearings. And as she's looking around to try and get back, she says she notices something crouched behind a tree and it was hard to make out at first what it was. Its arms were wrapped around the trunk of the tree and its head was tilted to watch me. It watched my every move. I moved closer and saw it covered in long fur and I still remember the fear I felt swelling inside of me. Eventually, I ran as fast as I could towards the light and the light that would offer me safety in all honesty. I ran face first into a tree as I turned to look back at the thing. Dazed, I carried on until my dog, dad found me again and my face was caught and blood poured down my cheek 
It took weeks to heal. There was another soul there, so what did I say? There wasn't another soul there, sorry, so what did I say? I remember the creature, or whatever it was, had pointy ears, brown and black fur, and the face had a snout. But then my dad used to let me watch Strange But True, so I knew all the weird and wonderful things out there, and I immediately thought werewolf. Its arms were really big and had matted fur, and it just watched me. As I walked around, it never moved, even when I got pretty close to it. I think it was the fear of the whole event that made me run. And looking back at it is why I legged it head first into the bloody tree, she said. Now the hard stand monster, or the standing wolf of Alkenborough. Now this account was kindly passed on to me by Chris L. Huff, who is a writer and researcher of All Things Strange, who came across the story when researching accounts for his work into the paranormal accounts across the UK. I almost fell out of my chair when I read your intriguing story and the account of the hard stand monster at the RAF Alkenborough. Just tonight, my father shared with me his stories about the base and it prompted me to do the internet search and that brought me to your message. I think you'll find my father's experience at this Air Force base is was in the early 1970s very interesting. He was in the NCOIC, a group of three men and their dogs were charged with guarding the bunkers within a large fenced area. I believe the nuclear warheads were stored beneath many of those bunkers. One night, my father got a radio call that there was an intruder within the perimeter and shots had been fired. He tore out in his truck and sped towards the location of the shooting, seeing a figure in the fog. He pulled over, thinking it was one of his guards. He rolled down his window and was screamed at full in the face by what can only be described as a man-like, bipedal creature. My father nearly soiled himself in fear. In an instant, the thing ran off at incredible speed and my father drove after it. Within moments, it had sped past another of the guards, who also fired upon it. He missed due to the fact that he was practically dragged backwards by his guard dogs who were yelping and straining to flee in the opposite direction. The third guard and his dogs were running towards the scene when they turned the corner of a bunker only to be intercepted by creatures running at full speed. As his dogs wailed, this thing hit the taut leashes and pulled them away from his grasp, lacerating a good deal of his skin from the unfortunate man's forearm in the process. My father and these men witnessed this creature make fantastic running bounds across the grounds before leaping over two tall, well-spaced barbed wire fences in a single bound, and it disappeared into the surrounding woods. My father's description of the creature is a little vague, but in his defence he only saw it briefly, and as he puts it, the whole situation was fast and confusing and difficult to process. It was hairy, approximately five feet nine in height, and it had intelligent human eyes, like a flat nose and large ears. The teeth were large, but not fanged. The lower face was rounded in a way that suggested the look of a walrus. The face was narrow around the eyes, but the head flared out again at the top. I have a very muscular frog-like thighs. He believes, but is uncertain, that it had reverse articulated legs like a horse. Interestingly enough, my father also shared with me what I think is the same tale of the phantom jet that you described, Chris. And like you, he got the story second hand. Now, R.A. Falcon Bay has many reports of an upright, hairy creature described as either a werewolf or a standing wolf, a human ape. And I'm going to bring though the rest of those accounts to you when we look at the reports that take place on military of defence land or in areas close to military of defence land. Um, so I'm going to scroll past these very quickly. One second. There we go. So, I have not included all of the canine creature reports that we've had, and we've had many of them, and they're still in draft, or any of the Cannot Chase Werewolf accounts, or any account that may have been dog-related from other areas of the UK that I've already mentioned in previous podcasts. But there are still a multitude of accounts. Now, the last time I brought all of the Bigfoot-type creature reports along the coast and the estuaries, and tonight we discussed the Dogman-type creatures. But sometimes when reporting, the witness does not know what to call the creature they saw. So we file those under the unknown creature tab. And next time, I would like to bring you those accounts. Often described as crouching creatures as big as a horse or an upright human bear, road-crossing creatures and something stalking me in the woods. 
because we also receive those reports in the hundreds, hundreds, sorry, people being shadowed or followed from within the tree line by an unseen creature that keeps up with them, regardless of wood debris or obstacles. Reports of unseen individuals that growl or display eye shine of red or yellow that slink back into the trees as the witnesses rush it out of the area as quickly as they can. With accounts from airmen at the RF Alcumbra to drivers on the roads, the witnesses, like the creatures themselves, are a very mixed bunch from all walks of life. And the only thing they have in common is the sighting of an impossible creature and the fear and confusion that comes along with being a witness to that. One anomaly that I have noticed from mapping these canine accounts is that many of the dogman and werewolf reports happen on our ancient burial sites and even modern cemeteries. From stone circles, standing stones to ancient barrows, there are invariably canine type creature accounts around them. In areas where old ritual sites have been disturbed or built upon, reports of aggressive dog headed men are on the increase. One very good example of this is the Drake Low Tunnels in Kidderminster. Those tunnels are in close proximity to an ancient burial mound. The reports from this area before World War II were your normal ghostly spectres. But as the war raged, the tunnels were built as part of the underground bases used by the government and troops. And as the work was finished and the barrow was damaged, the reports started to come in of dog-headed men. Now you can visit the tunnels as a tourist or a paranormal investigator. And the people who do visit and the guides are still reporting sightings of the same human canine figures. Is these ancient burial mounds important to them in some way, are they? Or are they protecting the area itself from intruders or keeping a closed gate that may, if open, bring forth more and more of these unknown entities into our world? Canine dative has always been with us and no fairy tale would be complete without the wolf in the forest. For me, I feel as in all things, we put our primal fear of the unknown before understanding. Maybe, like all beings, there are positive and negative, positive and negative personalities, and we tar them all with the same brush. So, as I say, I will be back next week, and I will bring you some more exciting reports. And it's been lovely to hear from you all. Um, lots of lovely emails and lots of messages, and I'm plowing my way through them as normal. And I've lots of new reports to bring you. And obviously, in two weeks' time, we'll be in Buxton. Um, probably a week's time by the time this video goes out or the podcast goes out I hope to see you there if you can make it for a cup of tea and a natter so or would you like to become a member of BBR if you want to become a member and research these creatures or speak to the witnesses or go out to the areas get in touch and I'll sort that for you so until next time thank you very much good night <laughs>